When you see the players get the ball in their hand for the first time, it's a cross between intrigue and excitement. It's great to see them try and bounce the ball and to see it actually bounce away. It can make the best of people look really, really silly. The number one sport in Australia is Australian rules football. It's basically a cross between rugby and soccer, and the fans go crazy for it. There's one problem. They don't have enough tall people. So what do they do? They come to the States. This combines the USAFL combine, and uh, we started this four years ago, basically in a search for, for guys six foot seven and above. And these tall American athletes, they don't really need to know a lot about Australia. It's the home of the kangaroos, I, I think. I know a lot of kangaroos. I hear a lot about kangaroos and spiders and snakes. Yeah, in selecting these athletes, we predominantly look for guys that are hungry. Most of the participants predominantly come from basketball. The concept of basketball in terms of the athlete being in traffic and having spatial awareness and those sorts of things is really transferable to our game. Which is good news because less than 2% of college basketball players will make it to the pros. The Australian Football League gives them another chance to live out their dreams of being a pro athlete. Most of the participants are quite shocked when they see the game for the first time. The question is, what do the athletes think of all this? When I got to come on, I thought it was fake, actually. I thought it was a scam. The first thing I thought, I thought it was a scam. I thought they was uh, contacting the wrong person, actually. What is Australian football? Skepticism aside, how do you teach these guys a game they never even heard of before? So the combine kicks off in the early piece with the physical testing, and then start to build into the skills. The basics of handballing, the ability to see what they're like with their hands. Then we can start to get into the more competitive stuff where they might crash and bash into each other, which they love that. Mason Cox. It's a machine, this, <laughs> this is Mason Cox. He played basketball at Oklahoma State. Two years ago, he was just like one of these guys in the combine. Now, he's playing professionally in Australia they can be one of the 22 superstars out there on an AFL team. It's a fantastic opportunity for these guys to continue their professional career. How many people have the opportunity to be a world champion at anything? We have the opportunity to do something that no one else does. This isn't played anywhere else in the world. So yeah, like it's serious, like we want to win. We're here to watch unicycle football. It's football on unicycles. We stick the NFL rules as closely as possible. Except there are a few exceptions because we're riding a unicycle. We play five on five, two receivers, a blocker, a center, and a quarterback. Everything has to be done on a wheel. The second your foot touches the ground, you're done. Each team plays 14 games. There's 56 regular season games total then wild card playoffs, then playoffs, and then the Super Bowl. Every Sunday, some people have been doing this for 10 years now. My team, the Blackouts, were undefeated, and we're going to be playing the reigning champs, the Herons. Bulldoze them over. Bulldoze them. This game is very important because we want to maintain our undefeated status leading up to the Super Bowl. They're definitely gunning for us. They're practicing just for us. I think that a lot of times people come to this game, what shocks them is the level of play. We're crashing at 15 miles an hour. It's not a joke. Some people get seriously injured. Most people learn to ride unicycle because they came and witnessed this event and they're like, I've got to do this. Once you catch that first ball, once you get that first rush, once you hear the crowd scream your name once, that's a feeling you can't get anywhere else. That's almost like a religion church to us here. There's passion, you know? It's a show. It's a spectacle. It's also a sport. I've cherished every minute of it. It's, you can't replace it with anything. There's nothing else like it at all.
football, it's a 360-degree game. There's no padding. There is a high risk involved in it because it is a full contact sport and, yeah, you really can cop it from any angle. But we're pretty tough and we get straight back up from tough hits. GWS's first goal. I'm Chloe Malloy and I'm a women's footballer. Let's go, girls. AFL, or the Australian Football League, is best described as a combination of rugby, football and soccer. I think if you ask any Australian, it's a really big deal. It defines us, it's a part of our culture. I think everyone has an AFL team that they support. My uncle played football for Collingwood, so I grew up watching him and I immediately wanted to do it. Back when I was a little girl, I actually played football for three to four years, but then there's that drop-off that a lot of girls have um, because there is no pathway into a women's sporting career. In 2017, a women's league was officially introduced. The key, good stretch from the All Australian. The AFL women's changed the path of life for me that I never thought I'd have. Great work in the contest from Chloe Malloy. It's brought out the little girl's dream that I had back when I did play football. I think the AFL women's is breaking down a lot of barriers that once existed amongst women in sport. No matter what race, what sexual identity you are, it really doesn't matter and anyone can play. Some people just don't agree that women should be playing football, so that's probably a challenge that I face and that the whole league face as well. The best way to react to all the criticism is just not to react at all and keep doing what we enjoy. One hope that I have is that if any little girl or boy flicks on the TV, they know full well that that's a sport that they can go into, no matter if it's being played by men or women. There's more to sight than just being able to see the crowd. You can definitely feel the atmosphere there's a vibe in the air, there's the energy in the air, there's the sound. It's amazing to hear the fans, especially when we run out of the tunnel. I'm Jake Olson. I'm the long snapper of the University of Southern California Trojans. I'm completely blind, I, I have no eyes. I went into playing football with the mentality that I had nothing to lose. Long snapping is an art. You definitely have the mechanics, but a lot of it's just feel. Feeling that ball come off your fingertips in a spiral, how hard you're throwing it, you know, where you're releasing it, just kind of getting that velocity and, and, that, and that accuracy. Set. There we go. Life's unfair, football's unfair, but at the same time, it's up to you of how far you want to take yourself. When I was eight months old, I was diagnosed with a rare form of eye cancer called retinoblastoma. When the doctors found my cancer, it was completely taken over my left eye, so they almost immediately removed my left eye. From there on, you know, just a cycle of, you know, the cancer coming back, then we fight it with treatments. Doctors finally said, listen, we pretty much exhausted all, all treatment options. The safer option is just, you know, the removal of the eye. Growing up, in the 2000s where Coach Carroll was so dominant with USC. It was hard not to be a USC fan. I always loved football. I continued to play flag football my eighth grade year after losing my sight. It was not anything close uh, to tackle football. As I entered high school, I decided not to play football for my freshman and sophomore year. It really was something that I didn't think I could do, but eventually my love for the game really overcame any doubts. And, and I learned how to Set. be an asset. Set. There you go. Money. I just love the camaraderie of football. I love being part of the team. Love putting on, you know, just the pads and the jersey and stuff. And being part of the team was enough just to, to get me to try. Girls are just as good as boys in anything. We know how to hit. We know how to run. And we can definitely play football. So when I heard boys chanting, beat that girl, beat that girl, all it made me want to do was beat them even better. I 
I'm Sam Gordon, I'm 14 years old, and I started the first female tackle football league. I've been playing with the boys since I was nine years old. In my very first season, I scored 35 touchdowns, got like 1,900 yards. Sometimes after I'd beat them, the parents would come out onto the field and grab their son's face mask and be like, don't let a girl beat you. I wanted to start the Girls Tackle Football League after talking at a school assembly and asking the question, how many girls here would want to play tackle football? Almost every hand in the room went up. So I got the idea like, okay, if there's this many at this one school, imagine how many there are in Utah or just in the nation. So I talked to my dad and he talked with some other people. After a while, we had the first season of the Utah Girls Tackle Football League up and running. Hey, let's go. Yeah, come on, ladies! Football is the last frontier in girls' sports, and if you think about it, girls can play on girls' teams in every sport that you can think of, except for the country's most popular sport. We limited participation to 50 girls. Those spots filled up in less than a week. The following year, we had 100 girls, and then this season, we've had over 200 girls who are playing. Every year we keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. One, two, three, four! It would be amazing for it to go into high schools, colleges, and even its own professional league. And that's gonna be a tough goal to reach, but I am really ambitious and I feel like we could do it. With the girls, you can tell that everybody really wants to be there and so everybody's just super into it and always willing to learn. With the girls, every practice is just an awesome time.